My artist name is Joji. I'm from Japan. I uh, just moved here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Tell me like how you first got into music, who introduced you to it, or? Um, yeah, it was really weird actually. We, I had, I was growing up with, uh, I had two friends that uh, we, we always made music together. Um, and we were making songs before we knew we were making songs. Like we, we would, we'd be silly and we'd make songs about like, you know, a, a teacher or like if we were like making fun of a kid, we'd make a song about a kid, which, you know, never do that. But, you know, we, we, were, we were doing that kind of stuff. And then one day, I think we were in like sixth grade or something, someone steps in and is just like, wait, like these are actual songs. And we're like, what? Like, what, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, like, you know, like it's, it's not easy to make a song. So from there, we were like, oh, we're making songs. That's cool. And we just kept kind of making songs. And through that, like just through fucking around, we learned how to produce, how to, you know, just train our voices um, and just kind of learn from the internet um, what was, what was popping all throughout then. Because that was when the internet was starting to kick off and we were learning and doing all kinds of stuff. Were you always uh, producing like on a laptop or GarageBand or whatever? Or? Yeah. So were there any like MIDI keyboards involved or were you guys just like finding loops? And Sometimes we use like keyboards, MIDIs and stuff. Depends on who I'm working with. But really, really we just, we're drag and drop. You know, we're obnoxiously just spewing onto the canvas. What stands out about that first like six months or a year that you are going to remember down the road? Um, definitely in this first six months I learned in America that the people are more unpredictable. Because um, everyone's more individualized here. I come from a place where, um, you know, stand in a line, you know, you're just, you're part of the, you're part of this bigger thing, you know. So everyone just kind of had these, had these like stabilized egos, you know. Everyone didn't think they were more special than anyone else. You know, it was all normal, not normal, but, you know, and then I came here and, and there's people constantly trying to one-up each other, you know, and people, it's not bad at all. Like I'm saying it's, it's, it's great that there's this much individuality amongst the people, but it was kind of like a little culture shock that one individual can, can, can while out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see how that totally goes like both ways. Yeah. You know, it's like less, less stress and less expectation, or less pressure on yourself, I guess, on one end. But yeah. Also, like, you can take a step back and chill. Yeah. For a moment. Um, all right, let's go over here. Okay, so getting into your actual like music and art, um, you especially for yourself through a lot of different mediums, you know. Yes. Well, I get I get everything creatively from the Joji stuff. The other stuff is just, uh, I mean, I do it, um, but it's more formula based, um, and it's me not using my own sound and own voice. I mean, I am, but the Joji stuff is definitely it's it's the the sounds that I, I want to hear that take a lot of effort that I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that kind of effort into uh, the other mediums. You know, there's definitely more. It's a connection to to the music that I want to make and the sounds that I want to hear, which are completely different from the other stuff, which is more formulaic. Uh, excellent job on hot ones. Thank by the you. Way. That was a that was a great episode. And you said at one point during that that you didn't know if people would embrace your serious stuff. Right. As, as um, what get finally like gave you the confidence to be like, all right, this is it's time to like this would be my just general uh, biological clock type shit. Nice. You know, it was like, uh, like, am I am I just gonna like kind of do this, or am I am I gonna move on and you know make make bigger and better stuff? You know, because that's really what it's all about. Like, I just want to push myself and test in all creative mediums. You know, just how far I can go how good of, you know, content I could make in general. Yeah, there's been a really cool, like, textural element to your 
stuff recently that I think most mm, people thank you. Lean on, lean on me, and like these yeah. extra touches that I think are really selling with LeBron. Yeah, mm-hmm. like someone getting comfortable with mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um, do you think you would have done this like focused on Joji earlier if Pink Guy and Filthy Frank didn't take off like they did? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, everything was, everything was based off trial and error, you know? So if if something didn't take off, then I would get the I'd get the point and move on to the next thing immediately. So I would have just kept trying until something took off anyway. So I definitely yeah. If, if the other stuff didn't work out, then I would have gone straight into straight into Joji stuff. I was doing Joji stuff anyway always. I just wasn't releasing it publicly mm-hmm. at the time. Okay. Do you have like a trove of unreleased stuff? That yeah. You think you'll yeah. Just keep in the dark, maybe the vaults. Or? There's a lot of unreleased stuff that, cause like there's stuff from like seven years ago. So there's stuff from high school that I, I, I listen to and it's like good enough to maybe put out as like a 30 second thing, but like it can never evolve into something greater. But obviously I'm not gonna put those to waste. Like I'll either save those for like a, maybe one day, like a collective of, of just like, I'd like to release a little mixtape of all the beats and things that I've put together. Yeah, exactly. Something like that, yeah. yeah. But once I reach the level, of mm-hmm. course. I can't, I can't just do that now and be like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> check me out. I, uh, yeah, that's like, I think one of the, maybe frustrating is the wrong word, but like half-finished ideas that you don't want to go back to, mm-hmm. but you don't want to abandon to. Like, mm-hmm. It's like one of the toughest things about. It is tough, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are your, yeah, we, I feel like people, when they talk about your music, Serious now, just serious mm-hmm. stuff. What do you think about the concept of like serious music? In general? I yeah, of the with serious music, I never like put too much thought into it. I mean, there is a clear like you know this is joke music and this is serious music, but I was just creating what I felt like creating. You know, like I I like making fun things, funny things, and. I also, you know, everyone has a fun side and a serious side, you know. So to me, I didn't see a difference. Just the way, um, I don't know, someone like Ugly God, right? He he raps about some some pretty, like, fucked up stuff. And half the people consider him comedy rap or meme rap, and the other people just consider him whatever. But to, to me, that's just people who make music like that. Like, if it sounds good, it sounds good to me, you know. It doesn't matter what the intention is, mm-hmm. as long as it, it sounds good. So if, if they were to say that Joji's coming out with, like, different music, then that's right. But serious music, uh, that's just open to discussion. Um, do you ever incorporate any more rap into the Joji music? Or get rappers on songs? Or? Getting rappers on songs, 100% as well as making beats for, for rappers. That's, that's fine, but I don't think I'll be uh, incorporating rap into Joji music. I don't think, I don't, well, first of all, I don't think I'm that good. Like, I don't think I have a right to just step in, like, like a white guy stepping in and being like, hey, you know, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna rap. You know what I mean? At least back then when I was doing it, I was doing it as like a, as a gimmick, you know? So I knew my place as a party rapper. But I don't want to get mixed up in that kind of stuff. You're in the unique position of starting a music career as a new artist, but you're already pretty well known, and uh, you've gone from something else. What's that like, and how do you navigate with that as far as keeping your fan bases? Uh, it's interesting. The fan bases, um, I believe, they, they get into a lot of arguments often. Um, it's, quickly, it's quickly unifying, though, um, from what I've seen. Uh, when I'm out on the street, it's 50-50. Uh, people either... They're, you know, they call me out for the work that they know me for. So, you know, the people who, who are still attached to my old work, you know, that's, that's fine. You know, I'm sure, um, I'm trying to think of an example, but, you know, Pee Wee Herman will always be Pee Wee Herman, right? So even if he went and ventured on to some other shit, like, people are going to know him as Pee Wee no matter what. Didn't he, didn't he masturbate in a theater? He definitely did. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not anything like that. But, but uh, yeah, so, you know, like, I expect people to latch on to what they first dis- discovered me as, you know, just as well as I might 
like an artist for their older stuff, you know. When you say uh, unifying, what does that look like? Just like in the comments, and being like, fuck you, and then like becoming friends after? Yeah, or? yeah, kind of. I mean, they're just uh, learning to to deal with, I think they're aware that there are different fan bases within the fan base, and they just have to, um, there's no conflict. There's not, not, not like conflict, but just a lot of, uh, arguing and speculating about what's going to happen. Some, some people want me to do this. Some people want me to do that. And maybe I'll, maybe I want to do this, you know, Everybody like, knows what's best for you. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you're affiliated with 88 Rising mm -hmm. and, you know, people like Rich Chita and High Brothers. Um, what drew you to that, like those guys and what made you be like, all right, I want to be like affiliated with this, this unit? Well, uh, the thing about eighty eight is they're they're on they're on some new shit like a like a they're really gonna be that bridge between Asia and and uh, the West um, a much needed bridge um, which I will give the credit to Keith Keith Ape who who started who 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 laid out the foundation of the bridge eighty eight came and built the bridge and now we see artists in the West wanting uh, to do shows or to get big in Asia, and that's, that's 88's job, just as well as Asian artists who want to get big in the West, that's 88's job too. So they, they do a good job at that. Um, they, were, they believed in what was going on. You know, they were like, you know, we, we're, we, wanna, we like your music, we want to sign you for the music, um, and then we'll take it from there. And they're, I'm pretty, yeah, they're, they're, they're good. When did you guys first link up? We've been talking for, we were talking for like two years before, just like we were working on trying to get uh, a show uh, going, whether with them to another platform, like TV or something, or just something on their platform. But um, that was before they knew that I made music. They had approached me purely as like a, a consultant. Um, for media, in a way, and then once once they realized that I did music, they were like, okay, like, forget all the other stuff. Let's just get you on board. Do you ever have concerns that um, people don't take the Joji stuff seriously because of the other like characters that you play? I don't. I don't have any concerns really. I mean, obviously, there's a little concern all the time because I'm just always prepared for the worst, but. The reason I made the transition was because there was an overwhelming um, support and almost demand, you know, like there, like I knew it was, I had to do it. Like people, people both like on the internet, like people stopped me on the street, people in my life where they were stopping me to tell me that I was wasting my time and my abilities, I guess. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm not that fucking good at all, but like, this is just what people were saying, and I, you know, I, I was beginning to, or for the, for the last, I wasn't enjoying the stuff I was making um, towards the end, so, you know, I thought, okay, well, I have to do what's right for myself. So whether, even though there is no backlash, even if there was, I would still keep going. Yeah, they were like, yeah, <laughs> like, are you okay? <laughs> like, like, blink twice if uh, you're in trouble, you know, stuff like that. So we're in an era where internet personalities can leverage their fan bases to launch successful music careers, like South by Dude was at TXT recently. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the way that, like, this very distinct internet culture and mainstream music are kind of colliding? Hmm. It's, uh, well, first of all, props to Atlantic, you know, for being the first ones to um, make that little jump and take a couple couple L's in, in the process. But obviously the, the end game is great. You know, they push Cardi to number one. And that's what they're going to do with uh, Cash Me Outside Girl, right? Um, and... As, as much as people hate it, Atlantic knows, and you know, people are beginning to understand that um, 
it doesn't really matter whether these people are talented or likable. I mean, we've known that, but it's not. It doesn't matter if they're likable or not. Like, people are gonna see them out of rage. Cardi's a little different. Cardi, everyone wanted the champion because she's just she's got a personality. But yeah, there nowadays, it doesn't really matter um, as long as your business models right. Atlantic has the right idea. You know, they know they know what's good and they don't care. You know, and that's what we're, we're going to see more and more, not just music, but big companies in general start to, right now, we see it as shameless, but in 20 years, it's just going to be the standard. So I'm rolling with it. I don't have any complaints against it. You know, yeah. I'm happy to share the space. Yeah, yeah, because when people people are like, oh, like check out this guy, like he sucks, or like they like people make videos talking about like something that shouldn't be famous, but like they're clearly making the video so they could get a little bit of clout. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Oh yeah, can you just um, tell us about the Joji project that's coming? Yeah, it's been rumored for a long time. Mm -hmm. you start working on it. How is it growing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely, the the project is, uh, it's important to me, I mean, obviously, like it's, but uh, yeah, I started, some of them are songs that, that I, I had a long time ago that were never intended to be released, and then I, I just worked on them a little more. A lot of them are a new sound that I've moved on to. Um, when I say new sound, like it's still the same textural stuff that you were talking about, but it's a little more advanced. Um, and it was originally going to be an album, but because there were some internal problems uh, in general, that if, if, we, if we were to put out an album, it would have to come out next year. Um, and I didn't want that. So I said, okay, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a lot of the best songs on the album and just shove it, crunch it into an EP, um, so that the the fans can have it earlier. And then I just work on, on, the the next one, pretty much. When you say advanced, um, does that mean like a greater like range of instruments or just like higher quality production or? Yeah, by by advanced, I mean. My, my knowledge has expanded, like since the last stuff, since the other stuff I put out, um, in terms of, you know, theory, uh, all that music crap, you know what I mean? And also just like, I, like, I'm always like learning new things here and there. And with every trick, new trick you learn, that opens up like a 500 million opportunities to do something, you know? So yeah, basically, um, my my production and songwriting gets better uh, every time. At least I hope. What's your education look like these days? Are you like which books are you reading? Which videos are you watching? Is it like the stuff mm. you're listening to that's opening you up? Or? I'm definitely I'm studying a lot of of uh, mumble rap because I like it. it. I think it's fun. Studying a lot of that, um, I'm learning how to speak Chinese, if that's anything, just because China's going to take over, probably, and I want to be ready for that, yeah. you know. And just musically, I think that opens yourself to a whole different yeah. expression, which is a good idea. Yeah, I'm trying to learn Spanish, too, but... Definitely, yeah. My yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely easier. Yeah. Describe your sound and where it came from. Hmm. My sound and where it came from. Um. It's basically I love the lo-fi sound. Um. I grew up listening to the lo-fi sound. I remember I was really into. Um, in like middle school, early high school, I was into uh, like old school like boom bap with kind of that 
lo-fi sound and to because I wanted to hear more of that sound mixed with modern stuff I started getting into listening to a lot of lo-fi modern hip-hop and beats on SoundCloud which which really kind of opened the door for me um, and also I like to keep the the instrumentals very very textural and all just like what like whether it's water trickling or something I just want to make sure that the the instrumental is packed and full with with just sounds that make you feel good you know or make you feel nostalgic like a lot of the sounds I try to go for nostalgic sounds there's a lot of nostalgia based stuff around the the music my um, there's a song called You Suck Charlie that I did. Um, my logic behind that was, so I sampled a, a, Charlie, a Charlie Brown Christmas special song. And I thought that song was special because this is like, realistically speaking, like single people get like lonely and horny around, around Christmas. You know what I mean? And when they, so for a lot of people, when they hear Christmas or, or think about like the holidays, you know, they get lonely and horny. So, so I took that song, which everyone low key knows, you know, like it's a song that like, maybe you can't like really pinpoint it, but you know it's Christmassy and you know it's jazzy. And I think that makes, that song makes people kinda, kinda horny. 